Welcome to part 2 of this report. In view of what we have discussed in part 1 of this video, then there's something which becomes very obvious. Whichever government takes over in 2022, yeah, Amoy or a Kenyatta must be in that government. Must. More so because of the phase in our history we are about to enter and which some people say indeed we have already entered. If Amoy or Kenyatta is not in that government, then plan B, Raila Odinga must be in that government. There is no third option. Why Raila? Well, many reasons. Now, in some previous videos here, I've covered the reason why Raila is trusted to protect yeah, the Kenyatta's and the Moy's. He has a track record. He saved Moy before, yeah, in uh, 2003. He has a big heart, yeah, etc., etc. And I'll cover that in more detail in another video. So those are the only two options, yeah, either a, a Moy or a Kenyatta in government, or option number two, if both are not in government, Raila Odinga. Now, judging from what uh, DP Ruto foot soldiers are saying, it is very obvious that the plan is that Gideon will be the person from the Rift Valley to be in government, and not DP William Ruto. You'll remember Markoman's speech at the funeral. He said, you do, you, you do not deserve to be a leader if you cannot allow others to lead you. Allow others to lead you, and then when your time comes, you'll also lead. Yeah, but the key, the key phrase there is, allow others to lead you. Meaning that Gideon wants to rule Ruto. He wants to lead Ruto. And the only way he can do that is by being in a very senior position, in the coming government, yeah, either deputy president or president. There is no way that uh, Gideon can be deputy president and then Ruto president or vice versa. No way, it can't work. Now the kingmakers, of course, prefer Gideon, yeah, because of the reasons I've given. He can protect both the Moi family and the Kenyatta family. There is another very good reason why the kingmakers prefer Gideon much, much more than uh, Ruto. And it is because they fear Ruto. Why do they fear Ruto? They fear Ruto because of what Ruto did in 2013. He created a presidency. Ruto has enough clout in the Rift Valley to change things uh, in Kenya politically. He has almost 4 million uh, votes in the bag yeah, to throw where he wants to throw them. If Raila had not shaken hands with Uhuru, for instance, Ruto would have gone into a union with Raila, yeah, and that would have been a game shot. But now, his options have run out, because the Huru raila uh, alliance is unbeatable. So let's come back to the first question we asked when we started this video series. Why are Ruto people so annoyed? Why are they so emotional that they've stopped thinking? Because the truth is, if, for instance, Gideon vies for the presidency, then the whole of the Rift Valley is going to rally behind Gideon. And if Ruto vies on his own, he'll be greatly weakened. Because at the very least, the Rift Valley vote will be split. However, those who understand Rift Valley politics will tell you something very important. They will tell you that it is very difficult to get the Rift Valley vote to split. And I'm talking about the Kalenjin Rift Valley. Yeah, It is possible but highly unlikely. It is like asking a young Kamba woman, yeah, a young woman from the Akamba community, to give up sex. It is possible, but it is very unlikely. <laughs> yeah. My free advice to the Ruto camp is to do their very best to get rid of the emotions so that they can start thinking. Because only thinking will help them. The emotions will take them nowhere. They need to think and think very hard. Now somebody may suggest, why doesn't the Ruto camp just relax? Yeah, keep quiet. Yeah, uh, retreat. Yeah, and wait for 2022 because 2022 is very far away. They can scheme, they can plan, they can organize themselves. They have a lot of time. Actually, they don't. And the reason is something called referendum. Top of the agenda of that proposed referendum everybody's talking about 
is weakening the presidency. Weakening the president, presidency to such an extent that uh, William Ruto will no longer be interested in that uh, position. Now you understand the sense of urgency in the Ruto camp. Yeah? This is high stakes political chess. And it's going to get more and more interesting. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I assure you. A lot of very confusing things are about to start happening. But they'll not be confusing to you as long as you understand the forces at play here. Yeah? Which are the dynasties, Ruto, and then the third force is the long-suffering people of Kenya. As long as you keep that in mind, you'll never ever get confused. Now, going by the events of uh, last August, yeah, and recent events, I would put my money on the group called the Long Suffering People of Kenya. I know that looks like a very unlikely winner at the moment. I know. Yeah, they are not powerful. They don't have power. Yeah, because in Kenya, votes don't matter. The people who count them are the ones who matter. And in Kenya, our presidential elections are pop, 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 pop. Yeah, as I keep on saying here. Yeah, so numbers don't matter. Even after I've said that, I still put my money on the long-suffering people of Kenya. Yeah, but even before we get a winner, this is going to be super interesting. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.